representing Pete's Coffee, 536 Commercial Street. City, as I'm sure you're aware, uh, perhaps the closest one on Tremont Street at Pet Downtown Crossing, as one of the back bay of Boylston Street. Um, and uh, they seek to open at this site. And it is, as the name might suggest, Pete's Coffee and Tea, primarily coffee and tea products and pastry items, which are not cooked or prepared on site, but delivered to the site. Fresh pastries are delivered to the site every day from a central commissary. So there will be no cooking activity other than the brewing of coffee or tea. Um, the uh, square foot is about 1,700 and change square feet. The total seating is 50 with 24 inside and 26 outside. Uh, the outside area is the same as was allowed for the Goody Glover's operation, and it's actually under an easement from the Mass Highway Department, which actually owns the right of way in that area. It has to be applied for, of course, in the license application, but uh, MHD has already approved the potential use, uh, again, to be similar to what they allowed previously for the Goody Glover's operation. We have not, uh, we are prepared to file. Uh, likely hearing day is December 2nd in front of the licensing board. Um, and I'm prepared to file and waiting for a couple of documents, and I'm pretty sure that's the date that will be given if I get it in. Uh, this week, which we're hoping to do. The uh, hours of operation, I uh, just noticed I on the application before you, uh, 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday, Thursday, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Friday, uh, Saturday. Um, there was some indication that they might want to open slightly earlier and close slightly later, but uh, I mean, we'll will go by whatever we presented to you there. Uh, I did receive some information recently from them. I make up these numbers, I'm giving them. 5.30 a.m. to 10 p.m., uh, but your notice at 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, and on weekends, 5.30 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. would be a half hour extra time. We will on the notice to you, it says 6 to 8. So uh, we'll, I will apply for whatever you folks if you're agreeable to it, whatever it is that you uh, suggest, but those are a rough hour, so it's closed. The latest will be 10 o'clock. And the other, of course, the Goody Glover's license was a 2 a.m. full alcohol license at this site for uh, how many years? But hopefully, this will be a pleasant replacement for that. As you may know, most of you know, the uh, coffee shop just opposite on the other corner of Salem Street closed not too long ago. That's an empty site presently. Um, so, we're hoping this will be a, a welcome. Time at that end of the neighborhood on the Greenway. So that's it. Any other questions? Can I just ask, because I noticed um, the Pete's and Harvard Square is advertising for its new North End location. Um, are you going to actively recruit in the North End? Um, I, I, I don't do their advertising. Caitlin, maybe you can help yeah, us out. Yeah, um, we would love to welcome anyone that would like to apply. I just don't have access to the windows yet. So we're just advertising in our current spaces. Another piece of Yeah, and I also have it on other websites as well. So we welcome anyone. Can you talk a little bit about the operation, what the need is for such late hours for a coffee shop? Um, we based it upon what was already happening in the neighborhood. So if you our, our Harvard Square store is our store that's open the latest, which is 10 o'clock at night. So we could dial it back depending on the story or neighborhood. 
And again, if I may just say, we, your, the application to you did say 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And actually it was earlier on the weekends, Friday, Saturday, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Over on Sunday? Yes, I'm sorry. Sunday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'm sorry, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. is what we asked for in your application. So that would be more palatable. So on some of the questions that we have on that, you know, we have had over the last few months as we've seen all this work being done there, it's why you guys haven't come up and presented your project to us and let us know that you were having a construction project that you were going to put that piece there, this and that, and I mean, we, you know, most of our projects, whether they're local or franchises, uh, independent or, or publicly owned, have to come to our board and, and, and do a presentation of what they're doing. They don't wait until they need a convict or a license to come on board and let us know what they're doing. Usually the, the, the steps are, like enter in anybody's home if you wish, you become a, I mean, I'm sure you guys know you have places somewhere else, uh, to come over in front of the community, let the community know what you're doing, uh, and go through the process in a fashion in which, you know, we've had plenty of construction there, we have plenty of equipment on the street, we've had the uh, place, uh, chain link, much greater size than the size that uh, you have, and that the space that you have, and the space that's allowed uh, from uh, from from the, the, the uh, highway authority, and uh, you guys, this is the first time you guys come on board to say hello. You have anything? You know, I mean, this is like uh, you know, walking into your house and finding somebody there, and then wondering who they are. You know, you guys are in that neighborhood, in that community. You've been doing construction for months, and not little construction, and this is the first we hear from you. So I think it, part of the answer is that the the zoning use was in place at this site, which is, I guess, slightly unusual, but it in fact is in place. The predecessor operation, the Goody Glovers, had a uh, certificate of occupancy for 37, which is restaurant, and 36A, which is restaurant takeout. And the usual circumstance would be that a place like this would require zoning relief. So you would know that way in advance. This one did not require zoning relief. The city issued a permit to do the building. So, I mean, I no, suppose... No, that's understood, but again, I think that's a cordiality. You're coming to us for permission to go where this is your go. That's important. None of us in the, in the community have that right. Uh, so, you know, if, yeah, I mean, I don't know if you want to make a note of this, but if you go to another community, the ideal thing is to come over, approach the community, this is what we're doing, we're doing it that's right, because this is what it is. You know, mind you, I find it uh, a big fire pitch when you got an entire building, it's 100% rebuilt. So it's, that, you know, but, that, you know I, and at the same, no, but at the same time, granted a permit. You know, I, I think understand, that's why. I understand, I understand that is, but at the same time, you have vehicles on the sidewalk, you are, you, you have an impact on the community, the polite thing to do is to us. I, I, I don't disagree, George. Uh, I did call, oh, reform at the very least. I, I did call Philip as soon as uh, I knew that this had happened. I'd spoken to a bunch of people, including the mayor's office and the city councilor's office, months ago when this was a possibility. Um, and then, quite frankly, I'm the, surprised that they didn't have license to come over for us. When they have license, but well, but at, it was it was well early on. Nothing had happened. There was no application. There was nothing in front of anybody. But as the possibility of them coming, we did begin the outreach. And then, I mean, call it my fault. I did not realize that that zoning piece was in place and they applied for a permit or granted the permit to build. And quite frankly, the minute I discovered that that's, that was the case, I did reach out and went back. I reached out to Mr. Federoli and I went back to the elected officials to say this is what's happening. And I immediately asked the mayor's office to put us on for the butters meeting and to ask if we could come to your meeting. So I apologize, but it, it literally slipped through the cracks because the permit was issued. And I think the triggering mechanism for most people would have been no, I don't have a courtesy. I have a courtesy. Can you tell us a little bit about the birth meeting? Yep, so we have the birth meeting at 6 o'clock and no residents. How far did the. Um, how far is that? How is it? 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 I have the. Uh, the map. Down and then across. Uh, I just. I have the map which I can leave with you and then I have the list of letters that we. Can take a look at it? Tell us a little bit about like what um, you're going to use each floor for, what, what it's going to look like inside. Sure. Um, so 
the basement level is customer restrooms and storage, and the street level is um, just our counter space and our espresso bar, and then the third floor is all customer seating and a manager's office. Where are the restrooms? Um, in the basement. And then, did you have to go from the side or you off the side edge, or? Okay, they went to the PRA. Yep. Did I see the signage before? Um, what, what's it going to be? Like what kind of lighting? So it's just, it's just what you have here. There's a blade here and this band here. So there's a side banner coming out, or is it? It's, there's currently a, a banner that was there. Is it uh, a the asked to remove one. Okay, but I want to see this. That's all I have right now. So the, the banner is in an existing a location where they had one and they asked you to remove one. There were three and they asked to remove one. So this is the banner. It's a light, like and the sign itself. How is that going to be lit? Just for the light jumping yeah. on it? That's not exactly. Yeah. That it comply with uh, the green way. Okay. Staff up for making fun of us when we have to volunteer to. You know, put barrels out and, and clean up everything, whether it was itch, you know, uh, cups. But they offered to clean them around, and they've been very, very good. And they're very good to the neighborhood. They, you know, it seems as they set up a coffee and they deliver their coffee and, and a lot of the local groups. So, we should. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in the neighborhoods that we're currently in, we're very active in the communities, and we would call them the same thing. And then we picked up trash in Chestnut Hill and around our Newton Center store, and this is going to be a long way to have the trash. Yeah, absolutely. So. What are you actually offering you guys to the coffee and tea? Uh, just pastries. Okay. Um, there's just scones, muffins, Danish. But oh, like breakfast sandwiches? No. Any questions from the audience? Don't you want to give me a slip? Or a slip? Um, I'll make a motion that we vote on uh, one to offer the one to allow seats to have a common vision for the license. Okay, so I'll go past the points. Yeah. Uh,